So it goes. J Dog back to answer some more damn questions. And the questions we're going over today are on the Carcass, the biggest posers in the scene, question mark. They damn sure don't listen to metal, I can tell you that. Got that right. They damn do any do any of you guys actually think that they do? Like, and I'm not, again, I'm not talking about they still listen to Possessed and shit that they grew up on every now and then, but is anyone other, because I think somebody made a comment, it wasn't about Carcass, it was about, uh, oh, somebody put in the comments, I haven't got to the video yet, it's on later, like, uh, Glenn Benton's the biggest fucking poser in the death metal scene, what are you talking about, J-Dog? And the thing is, I was kind of thinking about that, and uh, kind of going to have to disagree with that, I'm not going to stick up for fucking Glenn Benton just because I'm a big DSI fan, keep in mind, I'm a huge Carcass fan too, I mean, like, Literally, Ricky Peach Faction, Symphony Sickness, I like that just as much as Deicide, my, of, as much as Deicide, if not more. It's right there, hand in hand. It's like, just what the fucking point. So, I'm literally, literally telling you guys that fucking Carcass are total posers. They don't listen to goddamn, you know, metal, death metal. The only reason why I kind of disagree on Glenn is because who's he posing off in a sense? For example, for example, like, with the metal scene, he's always mentioned, like, you can look, look up interviews on YouTube and shit. I've watched pretty much all of them because I just, I don't just find listening to one kind of interesting, you know, or funny, or it's, you know, say something kind of stupid, but it's funny, is like, they'll ask, like, what are your influences? We don't have any influences. Like, we're not influenced by anyone. And he doesn't really claim to like fucking bands. The only bands I kind of ever hear him claim to like, which I'm sure he still listens to this day, is uh, like in Reaper's interview, he mentioned uh, Exorcist. On uh, another video, he mentioned SOD, Pussy Whip, Pussy Whip. Don't you know your Pussy Whip? He talks about shit like that. Uh, I think he mentioned Black Sabbath, but for the most part, he's never claimed to like fucking any of the, the like like razors and uh, uh, I don't even I don't even hear him bring up possessed or death. I don't even know if he likes those, uh, but he's never claimed to. And nor is he ever wearing T-shirts and shit of it. The problem is with Carcass is they kind of like, especially if you watch like DVDs. I'm like, to, um, I think it might have been on, uh, you know those double disc those double disc reissues that came out that had DVDs on them. It was the uh, the uh, series that formed the name. I think it said Carcass. Is that what it said? With a C uh, on, on each disc. I think I'm missing a couple of them. I have like the Rick and Peter faction one, and each one comes with a bonus DVD. It's Ken Owens is in there after a stroke, and like Jeff Walker just sounds very very stuck up ish, and like kind of talks about how like almost like it comes off as he's into music, but he's you can tell he's not. Um, and Carcass, the thing is too is like why I call them posers is because. They were strictly 100% for fucking money. They left the fucking scene because they went to go do their stupid ass country rock band or whatever the hell it's called, Black Star or whatever. I have yet to listen to the day. Band in the fucking metal scene, went to go do that, saw nobody, gave a flying fuck, and then came back to do Carcass. At least DSI, Glenn never left. I mean, yeah, you're like, yeah, but he's just sticking around for a paycheck. True. But, again, never left, and the style of the band has still been death metal. I don't want to hear any shit. Oh, dude, no, no, your shy's not like the first album. No fucking shit it's not. What fucking band is? I'm so goddamn sick of hearing that fucking cop out. It's fucking ridiculous. Any band that's been around 30 years, what album sounds like the first one? The first album sounds just like the first one. Fuck, I mean, the new Nunslaughter, Red is the Color, that doesn't sound like fucking Hells and Holy Fire. Same fucking concept, same idea, though. Same thing with fucking Deicide. So I don't want any fucking wise ass, but they're overcharged of blasphemy, and the, the, the later ones are talking about the brothers, they don't sound like Legion. But it's still death metal. It's blasting fucking beats, it's got the fucking growling vocals, it's down to guitars, it's fucking satanic lyrics, attacking JC from beginning to end. It's the same fucking concept. So I don't want to hear any of that shit. Carcass, even when they're around, switching over to Heartwork, switching over to Swansome, which I do like, you can tell they're just trying to, let's try to capitalize more, let's try to capitalize more. So at least with Glenn, it was at least more respectable what he did. Stuck to his fucking roots, never fucking left, never started some dumbass fucking country band. And as far as bands and stuff, you know, he doesn't listen to bands. I, 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 I believe that 100%. Do I think Glenn Benton's going home and listening to fucking Hobbs Angel of De Death, even the, the debut, even though that, that's his time frame, technically should be if he's in the metal. No, I like that highly fine. I'd be shocked if he was. Or anything of the likes, or especially not death metal. He's not to listen to incantation, immolation, anything that started his time frame or after. You know what I mean? Because DSI's first demo was 87. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't, he probably doesn't even listen to stuff like Entomb, Left Hand Path. I, 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 But he's never claimed to either. Um, he kind of always said he doesn't listen to this shit. I think he's pretty much, I blank said that almost in a few interviews. Like, never those direct interviews, like I said. I know he's definitely said we have no influences. You can literally YouTube that. I know there's a de definite older interview he says that. 
But uh, I think there's even interviews, maybe it was a written one, I can't remember, where he basically says he doesn't listen to much metal music at all, specifically because he doesn't want to be influenced by any bands because he wants it to just be his own creation, you know what I mean, what his own ideas come out as. So, um, yeah, I don't think that level makes him a poser. It makes him a guy that's not into metal, but I've, and how many times did I tell you on this fucking channel, guys? 90 fucking percent of these older guys that are in legendary bands, whether it been Death, Possessed, you name it, Massacre, any of them, the old school of Legends, the Cannibal Corpse, everything, the Morbid Angels, legendary bands, you still like their band. I do too. 90 fucking percent of these guys do not fucking listen to metal. At best, I've said this 10,000 fucking times in this channel, at fucking best, they like some of, they still listen to some of the albums they grew up on. That is absolutely at best. And 95 and I'm being oh so conservative with 95% of the time, they're listening to classic rock, ZZ Top, Rush, fucking Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, shit like that. Garen fucking Tiet. They're not listening to metal. So, well, yeah, he's, he's another one of those guys. He's, he's, he's I'm fully aware he's in that fucking category. Does anybody think Mickey Anderson from Tomb, you think that guy listens to fucking metal? Fuck no, you don't. Helicopters? <laughs> Fuck out of here. Anyways. What is the goddamn first question in the line? Adolf question. Human brisket. Adolf question. If you had a, the talent and drive to play an instrument, would you rather write and play in a band that doesn't go anywhere, <clears throat> write all the material, or join a more established band like Nunslaughter or Bossa or a band with a lot of lineup changes and pump out albums under an established band? I'd rather just new creation, my own, popular or not popular, uh, just because it'd be like mine. Because to me, with like, and there, there's a place for it. It's not ripping on them. Outside that, if you're like just joining Nunslaughter again or you're joining Incantation, another member, because when I think of Incantation at this point, I think of Incantation at as solid members is John McAfee, obviously the creator, and Kyle on drums. Everybody else is just kind of riding the coattails. And that's not the, that's not the knock the guys. You, you need some coattail riders, you know what I mean? Guys that come along and, you know, join along. Deceased is literally King Folly. That's, you know, everybody else is the newer bucks that just, that's not deceased. It's, you need them. You, you, can't, you can't do it on his own. But, um, but me personally, I'd want to do something of my own creation, not 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 somebody else's. Maybe here and there, fill in, be like, like say, to see, like I played guitar and deceased needed help, and like it'd be kind of fun to play the songs and shit because you'd be a fan. Wouldn't mind doing that every now and then, but that's kind of fucking fun. And but as far as a regular band, I'd want it to be my own thing. So that way, when I'm dead in the grave, here's my here's the product I left behind. Take it or leave it, love it or hate it. You know what I mean? But it's at least my fucking thumbprint left in the goddamn earth when I'm dead and gone, right? Urban Corpse, great fit as usual, J Dog. Love first albums from Carcass, and I really dig flesh ripping Sonic Torment as well. Fuck yeah, fantastic goddamn devil. Sanchez on vocals. Some great songs on that one too. I have been listening to the new Manicore a lot lately. Fucking ripper stuff. Yeah, new Manicore out now on Hell's Headbangers. Goddamn it, go check it out. For all you fucking uh, black and death devils. Uh, will there be t shirts and more merch from them? Thanks, uh, dog. Sure, there will be kind of more of a uh, Chase Eric question. Uh, I don't see why we wouldn't do t-shirts. We try to do t-shirts for all our albums, and sure we are. Why the fuck they're not already done is beyond me. Uh, I know we're definitely doing LPs because that's submitted at press. Um, again, shit turnaround times usual. Probably, literally, probably done in another year from now, or maybe nine months. But nothing time and no time soon. But they are submitted. I know that. <laughs> Human brisket. Was this the one I asked about the uh, too long of intros? For intros being too long, when a band has feedback over 20 seconds before a song starts in the recording, that is annoying too. Yeah, I think, did I get that video? Or was that this one when I brought up the fucking, like, even the first bathroom? Um, the intro was just the wind's blowing for fucking, what, three minutes? It's definitely unnecessary. Cut that shit down to 30 seconds, brah, brah. Rocky's musical rarities. Not sure what they're saying. He's kind of asking for the devil. Question, what do the devils expect? How do you expect death metal to change? Do you expect every new band to sound completely different? That would mean that each and every metal band would be their own distinct genre. Agreed. There's nothing, you're not going to create a new sound. There's nothing wrong with that. 10,000 bands, that's fine. But did you ever notice? Most of them, you're just like, 
If you've been doing listening to this stuff for 15 years or more, I promise you, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. Most of the stuff you listen to, you're, you're barely paying attention to. Even if, like, say you, your favorite sound is Swedish Death Metal, the new Swedish Death Metal. It's like, yeah, the sound's good, but these songs are unmemorable. These songs are not hitting me. These songs aren't very strong. Just because it has that death metal sound, whatever it be, whether it be, you know, sounds like Deicide, sounds like Incantation, sounds like Mortician, sounds like Cannibal Corpse, whoever, who the fuck ever you want to use as an example, you have standout songs there. Again, I'm going to say this, that's my main slogan I'm going to use from here on out always. I did a video <coughs> earlier titling that, is most, majority of bands, <clears throat> they may be they may be very good, talented musicians, some of them, some of them I'm sure not, but that doesn't mean they're good songwriters. You could be the most talented motherfucker ever where you can play anything, you can listen to anything, I can play that, figure it out in seconds. There's guys like that. That doesn't mean that you can write songs yourself, though. That doesn't mean you're a songwriter. There's a difference. And there's other guys who are probably very, very good songwriters, but can't play very well. You know what I mean? And that's when it would be good to, like, maybe get some of the, um, like, to the earlier the beginning, get some um, hired guns that are talented. They can play whatever the fuck you throw at them. Maybe some of the guys in the band, he should just maybe be the singer or something like that because he can't play an instrument very well. He writes all the songs because he, he, he can do good vocals, and he can write really good music, but he can't play for shit. Write it. It's just, here's what I want you guys to play. Kind of like Joel Grinus, although Joel can play at least decent, right? He can play every instrument, but he was the main songwriter, right? Joel was a great songwriter. He never dies, but some of the greatest fucking thrash ever to hit the speakers, in my opinion. Um, and you know, solo for what? The first three albums? I can't remember. Is anybody? I never got an official, I mean, I think it says on there, but there's no photos of ever on the third album, which is my second favorite, uh, Toxic Holocaust. Um, <clears throat> Overdose of Death. Is that just Joel or is it guys in that too? I think he starts to have a couple members on there, but definitely Hell on Earth and uh, Evil Never Dies, which I love, and the demo. Um, it's just Joel, and those are fantastically written songs, and they're not overly complicated. It's not like, I want to understand, because I'm not a guitar player or playing the instruments. They're very simple. Like, they're easy to play. Like, almost anybody that knows how to play guitar can figure those out and play them. But they're good, memorable fucking songs. Most of the shit you get, you're like, it's one ear out the fucking other. So write some goddamn good songs. Don't just write the same old sound. You, I mean, because you're, you're probably good. it's going to be a sound that sounds like somebody, anyways. So fuck the sound. Go with good goddamn songs. And sorry, vast majority ain't good songwriters. It's not like hey, yeah, not everybody can be a good songwriter, right? In this world, right? I probably can't be. There's a lot of things in this world I can't do. You know, just because you want to do it doesn't mean you can do it. Fuck. Maybe J Dollar wanted to be an MD, NBA player at five foot fucking nine. Probably not going to make the cut, right? Because you want to do something doesn't mean you can. Uh, David Lane, question J Dog. Do you own the album in the name of Hate by Malicious Hate, a quick killer album from 1996? No, I do not. I think I know which one you're talking about, but like I think I can picture the uh, cover of my mind. Wasn't there a picture disc of it? Am I thinking of somebody else? But no, I don't. I definitely don't own it. Michael, question for everyone. At your funeral, they put on headphones on you, put on iPod, CD, Walkman. Or whatever in your coffin, what band slash album do you want to play as they close the coffin and start lower you down? Got my, got my thinking of that because that's how G.G. Allen got buried at his, his funeral. Uh, I want to be at my funeral. The people that actually truly know j Dog, which is not too many. Uh, a lot of people I think they know you, whether it be family or friends. Like, I know him. It's like, hey, why do I got to fucking PC myself when, when I'm over around your ass? Um, like if I can't say what I want or speak my mind, to, I generally don't want to be around you because I'm, I'm already censoring it. You know, we all have to do that. Everybody, well, unless you're just, you know, plain Jane, for lack of better terms, you know what I mean? Because uh, you got to, you know, around certain people, you don't have to say certain things, right? Automatically, I'm bored. Because if I can't be myself, I don't even just want to be all around. I want to say, if I say something stupid or offensive, whatever, I should be able to fucking say it. Yeah, that's why I said I... I tell you guys, I've said before, that's why I use things, terms like gay and shit still, because I want to see if it offends anyone. Well, if you're offended by that, because I, we, in my mind, we go back to 1990, the years I was growing up, everyone knew what you meant. You weren't fucking talking about gay people. It's just a term. You know what I mean? So if you're offended by that, you're already a person I don't want to be around type of thing. So all the people at my fucking funeral, I want to be there kind of just shaking their fucking head. Man, j Dog didn't want no fucking funeral. He didn't want no coffin. Fucking play burn my coffin, motherfucker. That's what I want there. That's what I'm thinking. Don't know that song, quite frankly. I don't know what the fuck you're doing watching this channel. YouTube it, drill it in your heads, read the lyrics, love it. Great black metal song, get to know it. 
the black model guys out there too that say Jado don't like no black model. My motherfucking ass. Never said that shit. Andy McLean won. Shout out to you, Rob. I think I recognize your name. It's kind of familiar, but at the same time, pretty new. Uh, J-Dog slash Hell's question. You guys think you'll repress any of the earlier Death Hammer albums? <clears throat> they seem to be getting uh, hard to find. I have been after a vinyl copy of Evil Power Forever now. Love Hell's, love the channel. Yeah, I think so. I think Chase brought up something semi-recently, and I did too, and I said, hey, I, I, was like, I definitely think we need to repress at least the, the uh, double demo LP, which is my favorite stuff. I like everything by Death Hammer solid metal, but I can't say it all like I'm like regularly spinning it. I'm like, eh, I'm good. It's a background listening because it's kind of like, you know, more, you know, solid thrash. But the demo LP, I really enjoyed that. Really like that. That was my favorite stuff. And that one's probably been out of the print. I think we pressed that twice. But even the second pressing, it's time fucking flies. I don't know how many years. Five years? Six years? Eight years? Seven years? Six years? Somewhere around there? Well, quite a while. But I, I think so. Even the albums, I think, that, uh, I think that we will. And if it's not like this year, next year, um, I think in our time frame, we will. And nothing stupid like 15 years on the road. Very, very, very good chance, yes. Because we have a very good you know, business relationship. We've done pretty much almost everything. on something you know by them. Uh, mind, mind, rat, rat, rape, reapers, rape, reap, art. God, deep, Robert, I'm sure I'm butchering that goddamn fucking user ID. You're the first person that I've, that I've seen agree with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. That these new bands that are trying to play 90s death metal sound repetitive. And it's like, what's the point? That makes me more interested in hearing what you do like. This is the channel, Robert. You hear all the other stuff I do like. For example, like, here's 90s. You guys know this one? Fucking Fatal. Hell's Headbangers over at uh, fucking, uh, I mean, shirts available over Hell's Headbangers, goddammit. We got a fucking pressing something. What's Guts for Dinner demo? All you need, uh, I think it was Necroharmonic that did the um, first pressing. Almost positive it was Necroharmonic. He did a CD. Of, they have three demos and a seven inch. That's all they ever did. That's it. Nothing else. That's it. No albums, no bullshit. Or at least I do. I'm, I'm unaware of them. So, you know, that's the demos and the seven inch, so I know. And then Hammerheart Records. Couple of years ago, we got in stock several times and sold out. We'll probably get another restock at some point. Maybe not the LPs. He did an LP, same stuff, and uh, a CD as well. I think the LPs might be sold out now through him. But uh, we had the CDs even not that long ago, maybe last month or something. I'm, even search the site, maybe. But, anyways, that's like, that was, I think, this demo that got for dinner, I think it's 87, 87 or 86. Pretty sure 87. But it's that late 80s death metal, 90s death metal, because the 70s was like, what, then, like 91, 92 by the time they were done? It, 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 I'd just rather listen to shit like this. It, it's just so much fucking better. Like, this, I love this fucking stuff. Um, it's just, there are so many fucking good, and the reason I'm bringing them up, one, well, I'm wearing a t-shirt, because they, like, never did an album. There's tons of bands like that that were super obscure, putting out killer shit that 80% of the people watching this probably, probably never even heard of. And I'm like, I just, I don't know. I just don't get the fucking point of all these new bands that are the same sound when they don't even have killer fucking songs. It's one thing if their songs are super memorable, super catchy. And there's bands that do it. Trust me, there is definitely bands that fucking do it. That goddamn Melting Rot disc, fucking loved it. Brutal as fuck, catchy as fuck. Tore my fucking nads right off. Pharmacist, everything my pharmacist, tip, tip top. So I'm not being that fucking old guy where everything new sucks. I'm not saying that. Not fucking saying that. So don't fucking put words in my mouth because people love to goddamn do that. What I'm saying though is everything's already been done. So it's like you got, if you're going to do that same sound, you better have some fucking stand out, memorable, good ass fucking songs because there was bands 30 fucking years ago that were doing them and they had good songs. No, you're wrong. Just because the band was 30 years ago, there was bands back then. They had the same sound too. They were boring too. It's just, it was less, it was less. Let's just say that. It just seemed like majority of the bands back then, the, um, most of them had good songs. But don't worry, there's definitely ones, especially some of the shit that gets reissued. It's like, never heard of this band. Fuck. And I'm like, fuck, now I see why I never heard of them. I see why no one put this out. It's like, it doesn't, it's a good sound. It's death metal. It's like, nothing there. Like, just one ear out the other. No catchiness, no hooks, no fucking breaks. Just, just nothing. No good ass sing along choruses. No killer guitar solo that fucking just clawed your goddamn eyes out like a, like a goddamn long fingernail, right? Almost once another motherfucking reference. Things like that. So that's why I'm kind of stuck listening to some stuff from like 87 to 92 when it's like obscure, like when I talk about like the early 90s death metal. Uh, but yeah, like I said, there is still stuff 
And that's totally fine. If you want to start a band today, that sounds like 1991 death metal. Fucking suffocation, effigy, the forgotten. You know, that sounds like, yeah, effigy, man. Fuck yeah, effigy. That's fine. I have no problems. Like, those songs better be catchy as fuck. It better be given fucking goddamn uh, infecting the Crips. A run for its money. Every track. All nine tracks on your fucking full length. Run for its goddamn money. They're so fucking catchy, so memorable, so sing along as etc. For example, that's a good one. Suffocation, bring the spawn. Love Frank Mullen's voice. Love that heavy shit. Love the uh, dirtiness of the record. The songs are lackluster. I, I, I have the album. I listen to it probably once every two years or so. It's just, it's completely unmemorable. And the songs aren't very catchy. They're just just, just kind of there. But I have it as a suffocation classic band. And, it's, and I, I, I'm always entertained when listening to it. But it's just, it's just unmemorable. So it's, I'm not just ripping on the new guys. There's, you know, other bands... Fucking Suffocation, one of the greats. They are guilty of that. I'm bringing Spawn. Most people say bringing Spawn is not that great to the sound. Sounds totally fine. I like that raw shit. That's fucking great. Fuck, fuck you and the sound. The sound is just fine. The problem was the songs weren't that fucking strong. Like, put, the, put any of those songs next to, like I said, Infecting the Crips or Liege of Inveracity or um, Jesus Wept or fucking uh, Catatonia. Any of those songs. Those songs, Mass Obliteration. Those songs destroy every fucking track I'm bringing Spawn. So, um, yeah, so they were guilty of it too, and plenty of others, you know what I mean? So, uh, anyways, that's it for this one fucking devil's world with 20 goddamn minute marks. So cut it off here. Kyle's question, sir, do you know what to fucking do? Put them in there. Anything you have to say? Any questions? You know. Put them in there. See you tomorrow, goddammit. Later.